8K, 8K. Oh my God, and now it's gonna drop because there's different frame rate uh, footage in here, red raw footage, so there's like uh, 6K, whatever K. Now the transition should drop now. No, it's not drop. What the hell? This is full. This is Radeon 7. Champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom. It's Windows Pro time. Right, tell you how to champs. Now let's have a look at this Radeon 7 card and see how it is in content creation. Actual fact, if you want to see how it is in gaming, just specifically in gaming, I'll just uh, send you to Jared Tech's video here. So go see Jared Tech's channel where he compares it to an RTX 2080. And yeah, it's not just gaming benchmarks, but if you want to see specifically gaming, go check that out, That check that video out. So what do we have here? I got the gigabyte version so basically they're all the same they're all reference of talk to um, third-party manufacturers and they have said no um, third-party cards coming out for this radion 7 that's because basically as far as i can tell with this gigabyte they've only just slapped gigabyte stickers on the um, fans and that's it it's basically the only difference but anyway i have the gigabyte one i probably would have preferred to get the asus one but uh, they didn't have that available you know beggars can't be choosers because you cannot even get this card now what is this card not going to go through all the specs but actually it is an instinct 150 um server card or sort of say enterprise card that is made for deep learning and stuff like that if we go through here we have a look it's unleashed deep learning discovery it doesn't even have a fan here either it's actually meant to go in like um enterprise gear like you know servers and stuff like that for deep learning and this is what this card is so this is serious value when you think about it now this is a five thousand dollar card this instinct mx150 and have a look everything's the same compute unit 60 um a peak frequency 1800 peak frequency um, 1746 of course you know it's a enterprise thing it doesn't have a fan it doesn't clock as well as the gaming one 3840 processor streams we have 3840 here if we have a look here at the memory you know 4096 bit wide how wide is that like compared to the rtx it has like double the amount of bandwidth as the rtx 2080 and it has a lot more than the 2080 ti too and we're talking a terabyte there, as you can see here, terabyte there, HBM2, 16 gigabytes. This is, you're getting basically a $5,000 card, which basically what this is for, you know, $1,000 Australian or $799, is it? Or $699 US. It is a serious beast. And AMD are making very little, if any, money on this because this would be so expensive to produce. And if you have a look here at their video, 10-bit HDR 8K resolutions, yes, supports 10-bit. And that's because at the end of the day, it's not a workstation card because it wasn't made for the workstations, but you can use the workstation driver with it. Apparently that works. And the one driver is going to work with it too, which is the one driver is like a hybrid driver that's for, you know, you can game with it and you can also use it as a workstation for like, you know, the Radeon uh, Frontier or whatever. And uh, yes, they're cutting out some features here. So AMD have said, they're not going to, you know, there's some enterprise-y workstation things. They're not going to allow to be used with this Radeon 7, but it's certainly capable of all these workstation features. And it will only be a matter of time till someone makes a driver that allows it to do all these workstation features or comes up with a firmware where you can actually use it as a workstation card. You know, as I said before, $5,000 workstation card 10-bit support like not even the rtx titan supports 10-bit i don't think well titans haven't traditionally supported 10-bit i think you need a quadro card to support 10-bit and you usually need a workstation card on the amd side as well so let's see how this is with content creation now if you're interested in just for the mac i will be doing a separate video on this comparing this to the vega 64 using it on a mac external gpu seeing if it does work on a Mac in natively in Mac OS and then using it on Windows and you know, Ultrabooks, PC Ultrabooks and also just gaming laptops. So I'm going to be testing it on laptops as well, PC, Mac, stay tuned for that. And this is just my quick video. I'm just putting this up to show you how well this graphics card, this Radeon 7 works for content creation. And I'll show you in the timeline later. 
Premiere Pro, I thought only RTX 2080 Ti could do this, but in Premiere Pro, I could play back red raw footage, 8K at full. That is just amazing. So let's get into some of the benchmarks. So if I just look at Firestrike, you can see here, this is the Radeon 7. Uh, yeah, it sits like a 1080 Ti 2080. It's around that level of performance, a little bit more than a 1080 Ti, just a slightly less than a 2080. Although this graphics card has just come out. The drivers on the 1080 Ti and the RTX 2080 are very mature, expect some performance gains in the future. So this go blow for blow and actually beat the 2080 in the future once drivers get updated. That's just to show you where it sits there. Stress test passed, no problems. Interestingly, 2080 Ti, which I put in this same system, which is a Threadripper system, uh, 9050X, 16 cores, overclocked to 4 gigahertz, and it's got 128 gigabytes of RAM. I thought I'd put 128 in here just because um, for a workstation aspect, that's the sort of amount of RAM that a workstation would have. But yeah, the 2080 Ti doesn't pass these tests. The stress test, I don't know if it's just a Threadripper thing or maybe this is because this is a new motherboard or something like that. But there's something it doesn't like with the RTX 2080 Ti that, yeah, it just, every now and then something happens that it cannot pass this stress test. On this motherboard at least, I will we'll test it on an Intel system. I suspect it'll be better on an Intel system. But um, as you can see there, passed with flying colors on the um, Radeon 7. So now if we have a look here. This is a new record for my project, okay? A Radeon 7, 3 minutes 48, RTX 2080 Ti, and this is a Ti, okay? It's not a 2080. The Radeon 7 was faster in my 4K project render, okay? So that's a new record, actually. Nothing's been faster than that. 348. Now, this is the Puget System Photoshop benchmark, and on the right, we have the Radeon 7, which got 80, what did it, 839, and with the 2080 Ti, 787 now have a look at the gpu score 56 versus 86 on the um, radeon 7 that's like smash the 2080 ti there's something about photoshop that this likes i'm gonna have to try this on another motherboard but certainly in this photoshop test it really likes the 16 gigabytes of hbm or whatever it is the bandwidth there the latency it likes it and it's actually smashing the RTX 2080 when it comes to the graphics score in Photoshop. So that was a big surprise to me. So this is my 8K sample project that I just put together, actually a mixture of 8K, 6K, and I think 5K all stuck together, outputted to H.264. And yeah, the 2080 Ti, one minute, 28 seconds versus one minute, 26 seconds. Sort of within the margin of error there. It's very close. Yeah, but the Radeon 7 was faster again. So that's interesting. Now, when it comes to gaming, when I play the game, so for example, I play PUBG with both these cards, RTX 2080 Ti and the Radeon 7. 1440p, my settings, which are ultra textures, ultra viewing distance and ultra anti-aliasing, the rest is low. I cannot tell the difference. The frame rates are very similar, very close. At 1440p, because the CPU is a, still a bit of a bottleneck, I get exactly the same gaming performance at the Radeon 7 as I do with the 2080 Ti. Ti I'm talking about, which costs significantly more. Now, if I go to 4K, then the Ti will just take over and then it will blow away the Radeon 7. But certainly at 1440p, from the games I've been playing, cannot tell the difference playing it and the frame rate difference is very minimal and you know once you're getting up to 140 it makes no difference you know only buy the 2080 ti if you're going to 4k all right so let's get stuck into the timeline and see how this performs with premiere pro all right all right all right let's see um we have this at full we have this okay let's see and this is red raw red raw Ooh, green 8K, 8K, oh my God. And now it's gonna drop because there's different frame rate uh, footage in here, red raw footage. So there's like uh, 6K, whatever K. Now the transition should drop now. No, it's not drop. What the hell? This is full. This is Radeon 7. Now this is, I think, 24 frames per second, 6K. And now it's starting to drop frames, but that is friggin' amazing. That is just amazing. Especially with the mixture of footage there. 
So, you know, if I was just to chop that up. And, you know, I thought only the RTX could do this. This is a Threadripper system. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Whoop, drop frames there. Now, sometimes that's just the CPU ramping up because if you, you can see now, it's playing at um, full res and it's playing with no drop frames. You can see there, no. Sometimes it just takes a little bit for the CPU to kick in, but that other time, the first time, there was no caching. That was just playing. <laughs> As you can see here now, it'll probably be cached now. But um, still, 8K, full, red raw. This is not uncompressed to ProRes or Cineform. This is amazing. Radeon 7 is a beast. And I can imagine on a Mac, it's even just going to be better when it's like with metal, you know, because this is OpenCL and really metal and OpenCL on the Mac is better optimized than just OpenCL on the PC. Whereas, you know, it's more for CUDA Premiere Pro. But look at that, 8K, I could edit that no problems. No problems straight off the timeline, raw footage, look, nice and smooth. There you go, some drop frames there, but now it's real time, that is real time, that's just, yeah, I don't know, that's the CPU more than the GPU, that little stutter at the start, but that is um, definitely, it's dropped 21 frames at the start, and then, um, yeah, it goes into real time, looks, drop, drop, then real time, now that's real time now, now that's just the CPU kicking in, or whatever the GPU kicking in, um, but that's real time now, I can see that's real time, that's silky smooth. Wow, didn't expect that. <laughs> you can edit 8K raw footage. I mean, you probably want to drop it down, maybe to half. Now it's playing back straight away. Probably the CPU was already ramped up. Yeah, I can't. If anyone knows why that does happen, that's playing real time now. But that's how it is. And that's at half. And it done it at full. You saw with your own eyes it done it at full. Let's get into some render tests. All right, all right, all right. Now, so now I have the 2080 Ti in there, same 8K project. Um, full res, just scrubbing through. To be honest, uh, yeah, can't feel much difference, actually. I'll just check something. Uh, it is in CUDA. I'll just save this and then exit it. Then start it again. Yeah, need a dog gun mental. Just because it was in OpenCL before. So it's definitely in CUDA now. And it's restarted in CUDA. So there's no excuses now, so we've got a green light there, okay. Yeah. When I go over here, it starts to chop a bit. Whereas, I don't think in the Radeon 7 it was like that. But certainly this 8K footage here, that is smooth, very smooth. Now watch for the green light, let's have a look. It's nice and smooth, let's see if it plays it. And <laughs> yeah, as you would expect, 2080 Ti, that is made for decoding red footage. Oh, has dropped frames. Whoa, that's surprising. The Radeon 7 didn't do that. Oh, okay, might be just one of those things. Um, let's have a look. I will put it in an Intel system to see if there is a difference. Okay, let's see if we can play the whole way through. Now it has been cached a little bit here, but um, that should be able to play the whole way through. 2080 Ti should decode red straight. Oh, it dropped the frames again. So there you see it. Now the Radeon 7, which hasn't made any claims that it decodes um, red raw footage at, you know, 8K footage, actually played through nearly the second clip as well. So I'm scrubbing through this again. This has been cached a bit now, so no excuses here. If this drops frames or starts to drop, you know, before the second clip, 
then definitely the Radeon 7 is better at playing back 8K footage. There you go, boom, we've done it again. And I'll show you that, actually I'll pan the camera over so you know that it is. There, that's a 2080 Ti over there. That is indeed a 2080 Ti. So <laughs> the Radeon 7, that 16 gigabytes of HBM may be making a difference. Now I'll have to test it in an Intel system, maybe AMD system works better with the Radeon card. I can't completely rule that out, but you have seen with your own eyes that that Radeon 7 definitely with this project, this AK project that I've made, be quiet dog, <laughs> actually played it for longer, the 8K footage, it actually played into the second clip, which was the 6K footage. It went through the transition and all, the Radeon 7, and the 2080 Ti cannot do that. So, that Radeon 7, man, that's a serious piece of kit. See again, this third time lucky. Can we actually get through the transition and get up to the same point where the Radeon 7 could play back at full? All right, it's playing through better now. Oh, yes, yes, it went through the transition. Nice. This is exactly how it was with the Radeon 7. Okay. So that's good now. Ah, so I, what can I say? There you go, it's drop frames. I don't know, maybe it was just lucky it happened first time with the Radeon. Might be Premier Pro, just being Premier Pro. Uh, might be, a, oh, you're dropping frames there. There again, that, that happens all the time, that. For some reason, it'll just drop frames. Every now and then at the start. But yeah, it is playing it back at full, which is still phenomenal. I don't care. Either, either oh, it just drops frames again. Now that's weird, the Radeon 7 never dropped frames. Usually it might start a bit slow, but yeah. Definitely I'm getting less of that lag at the start, whereas with the Radeon 7, it would take a while and then it would go into real time, as you've seen before. Whereas this one always plays at the start, it seems. Only once it didn't play at the start, but it seems to be able to play the footage for longer, the Radeon 7 versus the 2080 Ti. Now, I will actually put this on a Mac. I'll be using it in boot camp, gaming, stuff like that. I'll be comparing it to uh, 2080 Ti. I only have a Ti, I can ask for a 2060, or oh, actually 2080 if you really want, but really. 2080 Ti, whatever, doesn't matter. I'm gonna focus on content creation and gaming on the Mac. I'm gonna see if I can make it work on the Mac. <laughs> will it actually work? Like natively in Mac OS, this uh, Radeon 7, you'll have to wait to see that video to, to find out. But I'll definitely be testing it in boot camp. Also, I'll be testing it on Windows laptops as well. So I'll connect it for your yeah, Thunderbolt 3.